my physics. It's Miss Adderley here. I'm going to go through just some different physics formulas that we'll see the rest of the semester and next semester and how to derive them or how to figure out how to solve for different kinds of equations. This is something you need to be able to do, okay? I don't want you guys just moving around letters and trying to figure out, you know, guessing. I want you to actually understand how relationships between your variables are, uh, how they work, okay? So I'm going to use some actual physics equations. So the other day you had an attendance um, question that you had to practice deriving. That actually wasn't a real equation. I was just putting uh, letters together, okay? So we're going to start with one of the basic ones, and this is going to be for velocity, all right? So before I get started, velocity, the letter for velocity is a lowercase v. When you write units and you write formulas, you have to make sure that you are using capital and lowercase where appropriate because there are some things that mean different things if they're capital or if they're lowercase. All right, so you have to make sure you do these things. An example is F. The capital F is for force, while the lowercase f is for frequency. So make sure you're paying attention to lowercase and capital. So this is a lowercase v. So the formula for v, for velocity, is v equals d over t. What do those letters stand for? So we've already had an equation that had T in it, but it was a capital T. At least I tried to make sure I corrected you guys on that. A capital T is for period, okay, which is related to lowercase t, but lowercase t is going to be time. Okay, so we have time, we have velocity, and a lowercase d, and a lowercase d is distance. So that we're starting off with an easy one here. Okay, what if I want to solve for d? And I'm not given a formula where d equals something. I have to figure out how do I solve for d. So I want to get d by itself. Well, in order to get d by itself, I need to cross multiply and put my t with my v. So it's going to be d equals vt which is the same thing as saying distance equals velocity times time. Okay, very good. With me so far? Now, what if I want to find what t is? Well, t is a little more complicated. I already did my first step, though. I got to cross multiply, and I put it here. So here's my t. I want t by itself. So what I need to do is I need to divide v by both sides. Okay, so if I divide V, it's going to get rid of that side and put it on the other side. So I'm going to end up with T equals D over V. So these are some of the equations that we'll actually see in Chapter 3 when we start in, into things. Uh, velocity is a very basic physics equation. It's very simple to understand. So again, just to review, we just talked about velocity and how to derive equations for those three things. So down at the bottom, we had V equals D over T. We learned D equals VT. And then we have T equals D over V. So those are the three equations that we just learned how to derive from one equation. So velocity, that's our first concept. Next one I want to do is acceleration. Acceleration is related to velocity. What acceleration is, it's actually a change in velocity over time. And you'll see that, that's actually demonstrated in the equation itself. So acceleration is going to be A equals VF minus VI over T. <clears throat> well, you already know what some of these things mean because we just went over them. So we know what V stands for. V is velocity. But what does the F and the I stand for? Now, sometimes 
when you see VI, you might not see VI, you might see VO instead, or V0. They mean the same thing. I like to use VI because of what it stands for, and it stands for initial. So your VI right here is actually your initial velocity. Now, uh, since we're talking about it, I'm going to just uh, talk about initial velocity. A lot of the time, your initial velocity is actually going to be zero. And if you have an object that starts at rest, velocity is distance over time, which is movement. If you have an object that's not moving, it's actually going to be zero, your velocity. And we just had an equation where d, I'm sorry, v equal d over t. So what's your unit for velocity? Well, distance is going to be meters. We're using our SI units. And t is s, or seconds. So your units are meters per second. So if you see anything that's meters per second, that's a velocity. So again, your initial velocity, a lot of the time, will be zero. Well, what if you have a problem where you want to know how fast is a ball rolling before it stops. If something is going to stop, it's no longer moving. It's also going to be zero meters per second. So those are important concepts to understand. OK, let's go back over here. So we did VI, which is initial velocity. Well, what is VF? VF is actually going to be your final velocity. OK. Oops. Sorry, I need to pay attention where I'm writing. T, we've already learned. T is for time. And hopefully you understand that A is acceleration. So a lowercase a stands for acceleration. So this is going to be a little more complicated, but we're going to derive each of these formulas to figure out, I'm sorry, excuse me, to solve for each one. So we already have A. Let's go ahead and just start with VF. How do I solve VF? Okay, first thing I need to do is I'm actually going to cross multiply again. So I'm going to end up with AT equals VF minus VI. Now I need to move my VI so it's over with my AT. How do I do that? I'm going to add vi plus vi plus vi so my final equation vf equals at plus vi if this is zero then this is adding zero so we actually wouldn't need that so a lot of the times if you're going to find your final velocity when you're dealing with acceleration it's vf equals a times t now I want to solve for initial velocity, okay? So I have A equals VF minus VI over T. I'm going to cross multiply and put AT equals VF minus VI. Now, I messed this up the first time. I had to cut that out. So what I'm going to do is just do some extra steps here. So I'm going to add VI add vi just so I don't mess things up again. So I have vi plus at equals vf. Now we could have just kept or went from this equation. So we had this one earlier when we solved for vf. So to get vi by itself, what we're going to do is subtract at. Subtract at. So our initial velocity is your final velocity minus your acceleration in time. So that's how you find initial velocity. Okay, so we have there uh, one last thing. We need to uh, solve for t or get time by itself. So for that, I'm actually going to start here. I've already done the first step, so I'm going to rewrite that at the bottom. So I have at equals VF minus VI. I want T by itself, so I'm going to divide A. So my equation for time is going to be T equals VF minus VI over A for acceleration. So that's my equation for acceleration. Acceleration will be one of the things that we do
relatively quickly.